Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Kent for Tuesday, March 30th, 2021, brought to you by the great people at today's dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best that there is. Make him your dentist today. I did it 27 years ago. I've never thought about switching dentists. 317-849-2933 is the number. Give him a call today. Remember to subscribe, like, ring the bell, all that stuff. Thanks very much. And leave a comment. You got a comment? Leave a comment. We like conversations, constructive conversations. You get angry, you get petulant. You know what? We try to correct you. If that doesn't work, boom, you're gone because this is a friendly place where people like to interact with one another. Let's talk about Indiana sports. Mike Woodson introduced to the media yesterday via Zoom, and I thought he was terrific. I, I thought he was really, really good. He was low key. He was really low key. Um, but he, he felt comfortable in his own skin at Indiana in a way that Tom Crean and Archie Miller never did. And, and I think that's really important. I think fit is so important, and we've talked about it ad nauseum throughout this entire process. I, I think that what Indiana has done and Scott Dolson has done is found a guy who walks into that building and feels like he belongs and he's the head coach, and he doesn't have to prove himself to anybody. He's very comfortable in his own skin. Uh, I enjoyed all of it. He is, like I said, low-key. But he's honest. He's friendly. He's forthright. In a word, he's Indiana. In a way that others just aren't, unless somehow or another they're from here. And while that sounds very parochial, you know what? It's absolutely true. And I think that Mike Woodson has a terrific chance to be the head coach that Indiana needs to kind of jump levels and get back to being a relevant national uh, program, in-state program, but nationally important. There's a report from Woj, so you know it's true, that he has been talking to Larry Brown about joining the staff in a non-recruiting on-campus role. If you can continue to put really, really smart basketball people it throughout, if you can populate Indiana basketball with really smart basketball guys, you got, a, you got a chance to, again, up your level. And Larry Brown, for all his warts and his travels and all of that, is one of the most brilliant basketball minds in the history of the game. Adding him to your staff. And, and this is, so you've got Mike Woodson, Thad Mata, and Larry Brown. And you haven't hired an assistant coach yet. How many assistant coaches would crawl over broken glass to join that staff? It would, be, it would be a master class in basketball coaching each and every day at Assembly Hall and Cook Hall. It would be fantastic. Larry Brown, what a, uh, what a get that would be for Indiana. Now he's 80 years old, but I don't care. 80 years old and functioning well, uh, I'm cool with that. It, bad health, that's a different thing. Plus, it makes Mike Woodson at 63 seem like a kid, right? You got Larry Brown walking around. You, you say, my God, Mike Woodson, you've never looked younger. So I, I think that that's a terrific, if they wind up making the hire, I think it's great. Uh, you've got to get some of these guys to come back. Some of the six who've entered the portal. I, I think that Al Durham is gone. I, I, I don't think he's coming back. It sounded like he burned, burned the boat, right? And, and there's, no, there's no getting off the beach. Uh, Jordan Geronimo, his mom was talking about how it's too far. Well, too far isn't solved by Mike Woodson, right? So you got those two who are likely goners. Parker Stewart, we don't know. I'm not sure he was ever on campus, to tell you the truth. We never saw him in a uniform. He transferred in, and a, a good three-point shooter, kind of volume scorer at, at 19 points a game at Tennessee Martin, but we don't, we don't know him. We're not going to miss him if he leaves is kind of the point. Maybe we will miss what he would have brought. And then you got the other three guys. You've got uh, Armand Franklin, you've got Race Thompson, and you've got Christian Lander. If you can get those three guys to return, I think you're in good shape. Mike Woodson said that he, he was going to begin the process yesterday of making every effort to make those guys feel like they would be investing their time wisely in coming back, and he would do the same with Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis, Mike Woodson said on the Dan Dockett show yesterday, he could really benefit from another year at Indiana University preparing to play in the NBA. 
And, and that's one of the things. I, I don't think that Trace Jackson Davis really developed in his sophomore year. And, and I think that he really could with, with another year. Mike Woodson, other guys kind of showing him the ropes, getting his feet right, getting him, getting him working in, in the right way to become a more productive basketball player, potentially at the NBA level. Um, I, I thought yesterday was just good. You know, it, it, not great. It, nobody came to sell us something. Dolson didn't come to sell us something. Woodson didn't come to sell us something. It was just, here we are. This is what we do. You know what? Let's get to work. And that's the first time that's happened in a long time. The Archie Miller thing was a huge event, right? We're introducing the Grand Slam hire of all times. What it wind up being, not so much. Tom Crean, kind of the same thing with the Crean and Crimson shirt and all of that. You know, here I am. Uh, and he was selling himself to us. Mike Woodson didn't sell nothing yesterday. Scott Dolson didn't sell a thing yesterday. What we felt like was this thing is, is back on the rails. It just felt right. It's a subjective, not an objective feeling. Yet you start articulating reasons, you, you can kind of get lost in the minutia. It's the feel. It's the vibe. And that was good. The Indiana women, they lost last night 66-53. It was kind of evident that they were going to have to fight their asses off to figure out how to stay in that game. Arizona was just more talented and more athletic. And that's the way it was. And they couldn't do it. Indiana 0 for 9 from beyond the arc. And uh, Arizona hit 9 threes. So when you get outscored by 27 points from beyond the arc, you're going to lose more often than you're going to win. Uh, sometimes basketball's math. And that's the way it was. The bench for Indiana played 10 minutes. And, and that's the way it started as played 190. Terry Marin, that's, that's what you got to do when you're in the Elite Eight. And, and you're kind of fighting an uphill battle. You, you can't manage minutes. You got to put your people on the floor, your best people, and hope that they're able to compete. Indiana last night came up on the short end. Uh, Houston going to the Final Four. Is this nauseating or what? Kelvin Sampson, for the love of God. Going to the Final Four, just talk about nauseating. They beat Oregon State last night, 67-61. Oregon State finally at the end of the road, a 12 seed, for goodness sake. Uh, squeaked in by winning the Pac-12 tournament. Arkansas, end of the road for Arkansas, 80 Muchachos. Baylor took them out, 81-72. Uh, tonight, USC Gonzaga, that game at 7:15, followed by UCLA-Michigan, at 9.57, that's going to be a hell of a game. That's going to be fun. I think that UCLA has got a terrific chance to take down the Wolverines. Uh, UCLA, I thought they were beat when they played Alabama. That game went to overtime. UCLA kind of, after the kid from Alabama hit the three, UCLA kind of put their heads down. They were like, oh, what was us? And then they fought back. You got that kind of resilience. You got a chance to go to the Final Four. Uh, Mick Cronin doing a hell of a job with UCLA. Pacers last night, losers 132-126. They had a 116-110 lead with under six minutes to go, and Washington just went off. And, and that, was, that, that was good night nurse for, uh, for the Pacers. Yeah, six-point lead, 116-110. And then the Wizards go on an 11-0 run that wound up being 15-2. Sabonis, 35-11. Uh, Brogdon, 26-8. Gaga, Goga, how about Gaga? <laughs> Goga Batadza with eight points in seven minutes. How about that? That's the kind of scoring efficiency. You, you prorate that out over 48 minutes. And Goga puts a 50 last night, but only seven minutes. What's going on with Nate Bjorkman? What's going on with the defense of the Indiana Pacers? They gave up 56% from the field last night to the Wizards. Not going to win a lot of games in the NBA, giving up 56%. Uh, the Colts, they signed another swing tackle, kind of a backup type tackle, but a guy who's started a lot of games, Julian Davenport. He can play left tackle. He started there. He can play right tackle too. That's a good thing. They also re-signed Joey Hunt, the backup center. So they're getting work done. It's under the radar work. It's not going to make the crawl on ESPN, but that's fine. You don't, you don't win Super Bowls by making the crawl on ESPN. 
You win Super Bowls by plugging holes with quality individuals who are going to be able to come in and give you a substantial snaps that you feel good about. This is a good thing. The backup tackle position last year for the Colts was a problem. I don't think it's going to be a problem in 2021. Uh, today on Inside Indiana Sports Now, we're going to hear from Scott Milanovic, who's a new quarterback's coach because Marcus Brady's been elevated to the offensive coordinator spot. Then you've got Press Taylor, who's a senior offensive assistant, came over from, uh, did a few things. He's worked with the Eagles quite a bit, knows Carson Wentz very well. Scotty Montgomery, the running, running backs coach, new running back coach, uh, came over. He was the offensive coordinator with Maryland. And, and so those three guys we're going to hear from today on Inside Indiana Sports Now, I can't wait. These are, these are normally really fun days when we get to go to the, the Colts complex and talk to assistant coaches. They are really good with the media, and, and they tell us things that we don't normally hear. Love these days where we get to talk to the offensive staff, the defensive staff for the Colts. Uh, we hear enough from Frank Reich and, and, and the coordinators. For goodness sake, uh, these assistants, they're really fun to talk to. Hopefully, they translate on Zoom as well as they did in person and do in person. Let's celebrate some birthdays. Let's go. Feel so bad for the Lady Hoosiers last night. Man, they they worked hard, and they were fun to watch. I, I enjoyed watching them the last two years. And, and uh, you know what? Every team has its time. And last night, they did everything they could to try to extend their time, and they just couldn't do it against Arizona. No shame in that. An Elite Eight run, Indiana has never been to the Elite Eight. They've never been to the Sweet 16. They got both places this year, and that's a hell of a legacy to leave for Allie Patberg and everybody else uh, with that team. Really enjoyable to watch them play. Jenny Quinn celebrating a birthday. John Morgan, the great Jim Shannon celebrating a birthday. The great Anthony Stalder from 101 ESPN in St. Louis celebrating a birthday. Julie, very happy to celebrate the birthday of Anthony Stalder. Jeff Peters, Susie Harper, Kate Delaney, and the great Ira Mayer celebrating a birthday. If today's your birthday, you celebrate like hell. If it's not your birthday, you celebrate somebody else that's best done with an honest and specific compliment. What a run in March we have had, right, with news in central Indiana, culminating yesterday with the announcement and the introduction of Mike Woodson as the next head basketball coach at Indiana. I thought it was great. I am really looking forward to seeing what happens with the staff, what happens with that roster. I think there are a lot of good things ahead for Indiana, finally, being run by an Indiana guy. And I know people nationally and people from outside Indiana don't get it. But having that happen is a big deal not just from cosmetics and, and aesthetic reasons and, and kind of a you know texture of the program reason. This is important that FIT has finally returned to Bloomington. We'll talk about it today, and we'll hear from those Colts assistants today inside Indiana Sports Now. I cannot wait to talk to you then. And remember, in the comments, leave your comments. I love disagreements. All good. You disagree? State your case fantastic. If you insult me, be entertaining. If you're going to be obstinate and ridiculous in your insults, you get banned. That's the way it is. It's a friendly place. It's a place where people communicate. It's not a flamethrower place. That's just the way it is. 